Hello and good morning. Um, very sorry I can't be with you today. Um, I'm currently at home uh, waiting for my wife to have a, uh, a COVID test result before I can come back in. Um, so I've done a video for you to help you go through this lesson. Uh, now last lesson we looked at working out the number of moles of a substance and the amount of mass of a substance and you should have finished those uh, calculations for homework. Uh, I know it was about two weeks ago. Um, we will go through those the next time I'm in so we can just double check you are all happy with how they all work out. So if you've not done them, you've earned a bit of a reprieve and you can make sure you get it finished by the next lesson. Now in today's session, we're going to be looking at uh, how we can use balanced equations to find the amount of a product. So we need to make sure we're happy with balancing equations. Uh, if you're not sure on how to do that, don't worry, there's not going to be too much on this, but let me know next time I'm in and I will run a session on balancing equations. And we're going to see how we can use those balanced equations to find the amount of a product, whether that's the mass or the moles. Now, there's a, an equation that we need to use, it's the one we used last week, and that is linking moles, mass and uh, atomic formula mass. So we know that the number of moles... equals the mass in grams divided by the relative formula mass. So that was where we added up all of the atomic masses of different elements when they were in a compound. And this is an equation that we need to know. It's the number of moles is our mass divided by our relative formula mass. Now we can rearrange this equation any way we want. Uh, if we wanted to find out uh, what the relative formula mass is, we'd have to rearrange it to make relative formula mass the subject. So I would then have my relative formula mass over on this side and my number of moles down here. So my relative formula mass would be my mass in grams divided by the number of moles. If I wanted to find the mass in grams, I would have to make the mass in grams the subject. I'd rearrange my formula. I'll get my mass in grams equals my number of moles multiplied by my relative formula mass. What we're going to do, we're going to look at what balanced equations actually mean. When we balance them, we say we've got the same number on each side. So if we look at this equation here, we get magnesium plus oxygen makes magnesium oxide. You might remember previously uh, that we would have used magnesium. We'd burn it as a strip of magnesium and it goes into a, a fine white powder. That's magnesium oxide. So when we take magnesium and we mix it with magnesium uh, with oxygen, we get magnesium oxide. Now this equation isn't balanced, so I'm going to balance it now. I'm going to put a 2 in front of my magnesium and a 2 in front of my oxygen, uh, my magnesium oxide. And what this tells me is that if I have two moles of magnesium plus one mole, there's another number there, so it's just one, one mole of oxygen, that will give me two moles of magnesium oxide. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the numbers in front of them to tell me how many moles I've got. So for every two moles of magnesium, I need one mole of oxygen and I'll make two moles of magnesium oxide. I could also go with if I had two uh, atoms of magnesium plus one oxygen molecule, and that will give me two uh, magnesium oxide molecules. Uh, but that's very, very unlikely. Atoms are so small, we're not going to concentrate on that. So we concentrate in moles. The mole, as you remember, is that huge number. It was 6.02 times 10 the power of 23. So 6.02 times 10, 23 times. I'm going to move that decimal point 23 places to the right. So it's a 6.02 or 602 with an awful lot of zeros after it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look at uh, how we can now we can of course change this around as well and go well, actually if I had four moles of magnesium, how many moles of oxygen would I need? If I've doubled this one, I need to double this one as well. So I'd have two moles. Uh, 
So if I had four moles of magnesium oxide, of magnesium, I would need two moles of oxygen, and that would give me four moles of magnesium oxide. I can go a step further. I can say, what if I only had one mole of magnesium? So one mole of magnesium. I've halved it now. I'm going to need to halve this one as well. Half of one is a half. So I would have half a mole of oxygen. And that would make one mole of magnesium oxide. Because again, I've halved that one. Now, if I wanted to get what it was for three moles, if I only had this first one here, getting to three from two is a little bit tricky. So I'd go down to one first. I'll take this two down to one. It's always easier to go from one. Trying to get to a number, always easy to go from one and multiply it up. If I wanted to find three moles, so I'd go down to one. I'd divide everything in half, which gives me this equation here. So I've got one mole of magnesium, half a mole of oxygen, and one mole gives me one mole of magnesium oxide. To get three moles, all I'm going to do is times everything here by three. And that will give me three moles of magnesium, plus three times a half is one and a half moles of oxygen. And that gives me three moles of magnesium oxide. All numbers that are fairly simple so far. <laughs> what if I wanted to find what I would get for, uh, let's go for 96 moles of magnesium. So I've got 96 moles of magnesium. This is starting to get a little bit trickier now, but we're going to follow the same principle. So I'm going to see how I got from two to 96. As I said, we could try and go from 2 to 96 and work out what we've done, or we can get this down to 1 and times it by 96. So I'm going to divide everything on here by 2, so it'll give me 1, half, and 1, which I've got here. I'm now going to times it all by 96, which gives me my 96 moles of magnesium. I've now got to do 96 times a half. So I'm going to get my calculator for this one. 96 times 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is a half, and that gives me 48. If you did that in your head, well done. So I've got 96 moles of oxygen plus 48 moles of, 96 moles of magnesium plus 48 moles, moles of oxygen, and that will give me 96 moles of magnesium oxide. So at the bottom of page 61, you have a worked example. We're going to look at using our equation from before and this ratio we've just been looking at with magnesium oxide. So the question says, iron reacts with chlorine to make iron chloride. We've got the balanced symbol equation here. It's already balanced for us. We don't have to do anything. What is the maximum mass of iron chloride that can be made from 20 grams of iron? Now I've got this here, it tells me the moles that I have. If I have two moles of iron, I need three moles of chlorine, and that will make two moles of iron chloride. Now you might be tempted to say, oh, if it's two moles and two moles, well, I'm immediately gonna say it's 20 grams. It's not 20 grams because we have different things here. We've now mixed it with the chlorine to form iron chloride. Our molecular mass, our formula mass is different Therefore, our overall mass is going to be different. So we're going to need to use our equation and we're going to need to convert our mass into moles. So we've got our equation. Our number of moles is our mass in grams divided by our formula mass, our relative formula mass. So I've got my mass, which was 20 grams. I've got it from up there. So I'm happy with that. My formula mass for iron, I'm going to find my periodic table and find iron. It is here, Fe. I've got two numbers here. I've got 56 and 26. The 
26 is my atomic number or my number of protons. The 56 is my number of protons and neutrons. This is my mass number. It's the number I'm going to be using. It does tell me up here as well that my relative atomic mass is the top number. But for there, it is 56. So my number there is 56. So I've got 20 grams divided by 56. I'm going to get my calculator out again. I'll do 20 divided by 56. Convert it from a fraction. And that gives me 0 0.357. I'm not going to go any further than that. I'm happy with 0 0.357. So I need 0 0.357 moles. So I'm going to go back to my equation. So I've got two moles of iron plus three moles of chlorine will make two moles of sodium chloride. I now know how many moles I've got. I've worked out the number of moles I've actually got of iron. I'm starting to get somewhere now with it. I've got 0.357 moles of iron. Plus, I don't know how many moles yet of chlorine. I can work it out, we'll do, we may do that in a minute. And that will make the same number. I've got 0.357 there. It's going to make 0.357 there as well. These numbers are the same. So that gives me 0.357 moles of iron chloride. My number here and here were the same. Here and here will be the same as well. If it was different, if it was one mole, I'd have to get this two to a one, so I would divide it by two. I'll do 0 0.357 divided by two to find my answer. If it was four moles, I would have to double it. I'll do 0 0.357 moles times it by two, two to four, to get the number of moles I would make. As it is, they are the same, so we don't need to do anything at this point, because this number and this number are the same. We are happy there. What we do need to do though, is to work out how, how much mass this gives us. So we're gonna go back to our equation. I can only remember it one way. So that's my moles equals my mass in grams divided by my formula mass. Now I already know my moles, I've got it as 0.357. I'm happy with that, and that's gonna equal my mass in grams divided by my relative formula mass. Now FeCl3, I've got one iron atom and three, so I've got that three there, chlorine atoms. I'm gonna to need to work out the formula mass of this. So, going back here again, on my periodic table, I find my mass number of iron, which is 56. So that is 1 times 56 is 56. I've got three chlorine atoms, so I'm going to do three lots of chlorine. I go to my periodic table, I find chlorine, where here it is 35.5. So 3 times 35.5, I'll get my calculator, 3 times 35.5, and that gives me 106.5. I need to add these two together, so 56, add 106.5, and that gives me 162.5. So my relative formula mass is 162.5. I now need to rearrange my equation to make mass the subject. To do this, I'm going to times both sides by 162.5. So they'll cancel out on this side, and I'll have one on this side. Which means 162.5 times by 0 0.357 will equal my mass in grams. I've got 162.5 on my calculator, times it by 0 0.357, and that gives me 
58.0125 grams. Now this is such a negligible number after the decimal point, I'm going to ignore it. And that will give me 58 grams. So I am happy with that. So from 20 grams of oxygen, I can make 58 grams of iron chloride. There is another worked example for you to have a look at. It's going on the same principles, but looking at calcium and oxygen to make calcium oxide. Follow along the instructions on there. And then there are a series of questions for you to answer, all going along the same line. It is a long process. I know that. It's, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot to do. But it's all stuff that we have done before. We've done this equation here, done this, and we've worked out the uh, relative formula mass. All we're doing now is bringing both of them together.